Welcome to Stillworks and Brewing. My name is Randy and this is the channel all about old distillation and brewing. Okay, so what do we got going on for you today? I right, today I think it's gonna be pretty interesting. It was a when I asked a couple videos back, when I asked for a uh, some ideas about moonshine and stuff, I got one idea from a, a, a viewer that really piqued my interest that I wanted to do and it kind of tied in some other things I wanted to do. So I want to really throw out a thank you to Scott. So let's get started. Okay there's five things that you can really do to help this channel out. Does anybody remember what they are? If you do put them down in the comment. I'm going to make sure you're paying attention. Okay so now let's get started. <coughs> okay so what we're going to do is we're going to make a roasted corn liquor and what do we need to do that we're going to use eight pounds of uh, roasted hard corn we're going to use four pounds of Morris Otter barley and two pounds of honey this ought to be really interesting so what we're going to do now let's go get that corn roasted and we'll be we're going to do that in a 300 degree oven and what well, you'll see so let's go get that started Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I got uh, eight pounds of corn here measured out. We're just going to spread that on some cookie trays. Hope it all fits. set for 300 degrees. I'm not quite sure how long this will take but I'll let you know. So what we'll do is we'll put this in the oven, keep an eye on it, and then every once in a while stir it. So uh, let me get that started and I'll come back and give you some. Okay so the corn's been in the oven for about half hour. You can see it's starting to change colors. Uh, According to the recipe, if I want to put it on, please. It should turn to like an orange color. So this, I can smell corn. It smells pretty good. I just want to stir this up. And we'll get it back in the oven for a while. Okay, so it, we're at the one hour mark. You can see it's starting to turn to the oranges color. Just give it a little stir. We'll put it back in the oven for a little while longer. The smell is fantastic. You can really smell the corn. And I'm thinking with toasting, it's going to give it a fantastic flavor. Okay, so let me get this back in the oven and then uh, Okay, so corn's been in the oven for an hour and a half. I did boost it up to 350 degrees though. She's starting to turn orange So it's looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna give it 15 more minutes And then I think we're gonna call it done It is turning okay so if you look a nice deep orange color it's been it was roasting for an hour and three quarters in the oven I did move it up to 350 degrees that looks good so what I'm gonna do is let it cool down and we'll grind this and we'll move on okay so we're back out in the brew house we got our corn is uh, here toasted uh, this here is a uh, a commercial coffee grinder with a little few modifications I've, and I've done some tests I think it will do a fine job on uh, on this corn so let's grind this corn and see how it turns out
exposed like popcorn. It did, it's, uh, if you look at it, it's kind of like, uh, corn, not cornmeal, but not just cracked corn either. So I think it's going to turn out just fine. So let me go ahead and get all this ground up, and then uh, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, I got about a half a gallon of water in my pot here. I think I'm going to have to end up doing this in kind of like two batches. Because I don't really have a pot big enough. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is, I'm warming this water up, I'm going to warm it up to near boiling, and then I'm going to start adding the corn in, and then uh, we're going to cook it for a little while, then we'll put it in our mash tongue, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, my water's coming up to do a simmer. So I'm going to just start putting some of this in. Make sure I give it a good stir. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that up to a simmer and let it cook for a little while and she should gel all up and hydronize that corn and start bringing them starches out and then I'll put this in our mash tongue and then the next thing we'll do another batch and then we'll move on from there. But I don't think it's going to take very long to hydronize, I'm going to give it a little while. I'm going to turn the heat down just below boil because I don't want it to scorch or anything like that because that would ruin the taste. I just want to, I just want it to uh, absorb that water. Tastes pretty darn good. So I got the, the temperature set at 175. I just want to keep it good and warm. But like I said, I don't want to scorch the bottom. Okay, so let me get this one cooked up. Then we'll move on. I'll get the next one done, then we'll be back for the next step. Okay, so what I basically I did is I brought this first pot up to uh, close to 190, and what I'm afraid of is scorching on the bottom. So what I'm going to do, I'll get the second batch going. I'll get the second batch going, and then. Uh, I'll make sure this is 190 degrees inside our mash tongue, and then I'm gonna leave it in the hour, in there for an hour. Yeah, I'm just afraid of scorching it in that pan because that'd be a terrible thing. Okay, so let me get the second batch going, and we'll get that put in the mash tongue, and we'll be back. All right, I got my second half done. So what I'm gonna do is I'll put that in the pot. I mean, you can. It's oh, nice and. Thick. Like I said, I was afraid of scorching this on the bottom of this pot, just the way it was acting. So what I'm going to do now is uh, take my temperature out. I'm be willing to bet that it's a little bit low. I mean, I'm at 100, 153 degrees in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil me another, get me another pot of good water boiling and then uh, I'll add that and I'm assuming that will get me up to uh, near 190 degrees what I want and then uh, we're going to let it sit there and cook inside the mash tongue for an hour 
and then uh, we'll stop back and make sure that the uh, the starch come out. We'll do an iodine test, make sure the starch come out of that corn. Uh, smell wise for right now, it smells like popcorn. That's amazing. So uh, let me get some more water boiling and I'll be back in a little while. Okay, so it's been about an hour. I uh, had my corn and all in here. I had to add a little bit of hot water to, I got her up to about 190 degrees so, and then let it sit for an hour and what we're going to do now, give her a little stir, and then I wanted to take a starch test, a little bit of iodine, a white, white dish, okay so let me get a little sample. I'll bring this over so you can see it. Get you set up. Let me move the camera down so you can see this. Okay, so there's our sample out of our corn. We put a drop of, oh, look at that. See how that turns instant black and it don't change back. It's almost like a, a deep purple, purplish black. So that means that is laden with starches, okay? So that is a good thing. So I think we got our starch out of our corn. Let me move you back up here. So we got our starches out of our corn, so that's a nice, that's a good thing. So now what we need to do is, let's check our temperature. Uh, 158, I'll do this, I'm going to go ahead and add the barley now at 156. I think that's, it, it'll bring it down to just the right amount. So we're going to mix in this, our barley. And I did have three gallons of uh, water in with the corn. This is really thickening her up. Alright, there's our barley. The temperature we're really looking for is somewhere from uh, 45 up to 155 or something like that. Alright. Let me see what our temperature is now. And our temperature is 153. Okay, perfect. Put the lid back on it. Put the lid back on. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to let this sit for, well, I'm going to say an hour and a half. To give that chance for that uh, barley to convert all the sugars that are in the uh, our mash now. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll sparge that into the ferment bucket. Double check our temperature and then we'll ferment. 
but before we do that what we'll do is uh, when we come back in an hour and a half we'll do another starch test and we'll be able to see if that convert if the starting conversion took place okay so we'll see you after a while okay so it's been about an hour and a half let's see what we got here we're gonna take a we're gonna do a uh, starch test take this little sample Let me bring this over so you can see it. Okay, so we took a little sample. Okay, see it did not turn black. It's pretty much going back to the original color. Oops, can you see it? See it pretty much went back to the original color. So I think the, the conversion has taken place. Alright, so the conversion has taken place. So what we're going to do now, yes, you can see that it's all it's back to the original color. Okay. So what we're going to do is let's sparge this over into our uh, fermentation bucket. Okay, according to our recipe, one thing that is a pound and a half, or two pounds of honey. So we're going to add our honey while it's still warm. All right, so what we'll do is we're going to sparge this over until we collect about six gallons of mash here. So, I'll be back. Okay, so I did sparge over and collected up about six gallons of a mash. And I did happen to add four pound, you know, one bag of sugar, four pounds of sugar to it. Just trying to boost it up, I think. Let's see what we got now. So, our starting gravity Let me get a little better light Starting gravity 1.090 That is about perfect Okay So, what I need to do next Is I will check the temperature And when it's to about 90 degrees or below, I'm going to add in my daddy's yeast and we're going to ferment this out. Okay, to give a kind of a recap of what we did, uh, first we took some 8 pounds of a whole kernel corn, uh, which actually I ended up getting at the local tractor supply, which was $9.50 uh, for 50 pounds. So anyway, I took 8 pounds of corn and we put it on a cookie sheet and we roasted it till it was kind of an orangish color and then what we did is we milled it and then what we did 
which one thing I think I'd do a little bit different, I tried to put it in a pot and kind of cook it. To me, that didn't work out to the, the best. I think next time what I'll do is like I normally do, is I put boiling water into my mash tun, mix the corn in, make sure we're at that 190, at least 190 degrees, and leave it in there for an hour. That's what I'm gonna do next time. So, let me get back. So we did mix our corn into our mash tun. Uh, got made sure it was at 190 degrees, and we let it sit in there for, for about an hour. And after that, what we did is once it cooled down to about 160 degrees, we added in our barley, which dropped it down to 155-ish range, and we left it in there for uh, an hour and a half. And then we took a starch test, found out that the conversion did take place. So after that, we sparged over into our fermenter, and we collected six gallons of mash in our fermenter bucket. We added the two pounds of honey. And then I did also add uh, one bag of sugar. It was four pounds. And that brought us up to 1.090. And so we got it in the fermentation room now. It's just a little bit warm for the yeast. It was about 110 degrees. So we're going to let it cool down for a little bit. Later on today we'll We'll add the yeast in and let this stuff ferment. Um, this is the first time that I've ever used whole kernel corn. Uh, it worked out fine. The price is right. And I think we'll use it some more. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, I think that's about it. So what we'll do is we'll wait, wait a week, 10 days, it should be done ferment, maybe even two weeks. And then what we'll do is we'll distill this out. We're going to have some good, good corn liquor. And I've been looking forward to this. I want to also thank Scott again. He had a great idea. Uh, it really intrigued me. Uh, the this, this smell, it smells just like popcorn. And if you actually taste the, uh, the, uh, the corn, you know, before we actually put it in the, uh, what it tasted like popcorn. So this all be pretty interesting. I'm curious to see how it's going to come out. I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty nice. Uh, so let's see. I think that's about it. Uh, I want to thank you for stopping by. And we'll see you next time.